Chuck Fresh with Computer Care Clinic here in Melbourne, Florida, and we've got a lot of questions, probably a couple hundred calls this week about the Yahoo breach. Yes, this did happen before in 2013, but this is a brand new one that happened in September, approximately September. They're not really exactly sure when it happened, but around September 2016, just found out about it in uh, December. So now uh, everybody's running around, oh my God, my Yahoo account was attacked and hacked and uh, it's the end of the world. Well, it's not really because it wasn't everyone. However, it was a pretty large number, according to the New York Times. They're saying one billion user accounts were attacked. That's like like one sixth of the entire world's population. But a lot of people have multiple accounts. Businesses have 20, 30 accounts. I have like four or five of them. And... Uh, want to use for spam mail and whatever. I'll, we talked about that in a different video. But anyway, um, if you're one of those people who uses Yahoo email as your personal email, as your primary email, this is the way the world gets in touch with you. You definitely want to change your account settings and make it a little bit safer and a little more difficult for people to hack into it. And if you attach that Yahoo account to several other things like your Amazon or your Netflix or other stuff, that's even more important because people could send password requests to your Yahoo account and try to reset your passwords for all those other accounts, and that could cause a big problem. So that's the big problem here. It's everything, not so much Yahoo itself, but the things that you've attached Yahoo to. So um, Yahoo's talking about it. You can do a Google search to find out exactly what happened. And again, this is the second time this has happened. And uh, I don't know, Yahoo is like reminding me of Anthony Weiner. Just can't keep their pants up. In all fairness, it's not... Well, Yahoo does have a certain amount of responsibility, but blah, blah, blah. Who cares what's, whose fault it is? Hopefully, they're taking steps, so this will not happen a third time, Yahoo. Um, they're apparently going to be acquired by AT&T, and I'm hoping AT&T's got some better security chops, man. And if AT&T's running around with their pants down, we're all in big trouble. So, um, Yahoo themselves, uh, this was weird because this came from Yahoo Philippines. This was really weird. It wasn't Yahoo US, so I was a, a little sketchy. But anyway, it says what happened, and they, they tell uh, the story of Yahoo being told by authorities in November 2016 that somebody did something with cookies or whatever, and they've got all kinds of people in there. So you should have gotten a, a note from Yahoo or an email because there was a list of what or who Yahoo believes was affected by this breach. So if you got that notice, there should be instructions in that email on how to do it but if you're not sure if you don't trust it you can trust us we're computer care clinic and uh, we are the authority on everything so trust us so here's how to change the password actually I googled it and you go away from Yahoo to see if there was more information than there was so this is actually accurate you go to the Yahoo account info page and uh, you can tap the menu icon go to account security blah 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 so this is I've actually gone in and changed mine so this is the Yahoo help. And again, this is Philippines, which is really weird and kind of a little scary. Um, if you've forgotten your password because you saved it on your computer and uh, you've never had a reason to type it in, which is unusual because Yahoo, AT&T, Bell South, all those associated accounts usually make you log in every two weeks or 14 days to make sure that it is you and somebody didn't acquire your computer or somebody's not sitting in an internet cafe or something where you left your account logged in. So you never want to do that, especially on a public computer. We talked about that in other computers. It's just common sense, people. So you go to the security page, and you'll see personal info, and then you'll see account security as the second tab here. And then you just click on change password. But before you do that, what I recommend is clicking on this two-step verification. Now, you will need a phone, a smartphone, or any other phone that gets text messages or SMS messages. So you click on that. And then you just enter your mobile phone number in here, and it will send you a secret code. So if somebody tries to log in or some kind of monkey business goes in, you're going to get a text message on your phone. I just got one here. And then you enter the special key that they text to your phone. And you don't have to write this down or remember it or whatever. You can actually have Yahoo call you, too, if you can't get SMSs. Click on Verify, and then boom. So you can reconnect all your apps with two-step verification, and there's some information on how to do that. But that's the safest way to do things. A lot of websites are 
uh, implementing this two-step verification, which is a wonderful security thing, because you always have your cell phone with you in most cases. Most of us have our cell phone. So if there's some kind of monkey business, a password reset request, whatever, you get that code on your phone, and you're going to be notified immediately. And then you go, hey, that's not me, and then you can shut it down. Or the person who's trying to get into your account won't be able to get in there because they don't have your cell phone and the secret authentication code that will be sent via text message. So just uh, and then just click your uh, change your password. You're going to have two things here. You're going to have a whole new password, assuming you're logged in and um, just create your new password. And you should make it a complicated password, as we've been preaching. And you shouldn't use the same password in multiple accounts. I know, I know you got to remember all these passwords and you really shouldn't store them on your computer either. What you need to do is write them down somewhere because if your computer is hacked or compromised or stolen, somebody's going to get that file with all your passwords and then all hell is going to break loose. And you don't want that, ladies and gentlemen. So what you want to do is get a little, yeah, this is old school, a little paper password book. We have a link to one on our website. And write your passwords down by hand and keep that book in a safe place where you and only you know where it is. And, uh, of course, that book could be stolen too. You might want to lock it up. Hey, I'm just uh, trying to err on the side of caution here. So type in your new password again. Make it complicated. To a, a, I believe you have to make it complicated now. Make a, a combination of upper and lower case letters. And also, I believe you have to have some numbers in there, too. So what I tell a lot of people is do some kind of combination of a secret name or a nickname or a pet's name. And then maybe the first phone number you ever had or the only one you can remember or maybe an address or a zip code. And then add a few characters in there. You can do exclamation marks. You can do, uh, I believe you can do pound signs and at signs and parentheses. And I haven't gone through all this. I've used a couple in mine, but I'm not telling you what it is, fool. But uh, put that stuff in there too and mix it up and use the uh, characters in between your letters to kind of separate things. So you could do your dog's name. You could do Fido and then, uh, I don't know, hashtag. And then your first phone number, 215-921-3684. I made that up. And then exclamation mark. And then maybe your zip code after that. And then put another one at the end. So that'll be very, very difficult for someone to compromise. So the more complicated it is, the better. Of course, if Yahoo or AT&T or whoever is hacked again, they're going to get that information. So you're you're kind of screwed either way. But in the meantime, make it as difficult as possible. Because some people sit on their computers over there and uh, I don't know where they are. I'm the Macedonia or I've read an article and somebody is writing these fake news articles. They're sitting there on these computers and they have these hacking programs. And what they do is they go a brute force hack and they just go through all these combinations of common words and numbers and and they go through all these accounts and they just keep trying to hack in. That's getting more difficult to do, but it is possible. So the more complicated your password is, the better off you are and the less chance you'll be hacked. And if you have two-step authentication, it's even less likely. My name is Chuck Fresh. Please leave your, your comments below if you have other security tips or any experiences with this Yahoo breach or if something happened to you. We want to hear about it. And uh, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Good luck and stay safe.